our peace. He's been the present help in the time of trouble. The Lord is always there to the stormy weather. He's been good. He's been good. Yeah. Shown up good. He's been good. He's yes, been good he has. To me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I get so excited. Just can't hold my peace. He's been the present help. In the time of trouble, the Lord is always there. Through the stormy weather, He's been good. He's been good. Shown sure up good. Shown sure up good. He's been good. He's been yeah. good to me. Oh, every time. Every time I turn around, He keeps on blessing me. Every time. Every time I turn around, He gives me the Oh, He's been, been good. He's been good. Yes, He has. Sure He's been good. He's been good to me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I get so excited. I just can't hold my peace. He's been the present help in the time of trouble. The Lord is always there to the stormy weather. He's been good. He's been good. Shown sure up good. Sure good. He's been good. He's Yes, he's oh, every time. Every time I turn around, he gets on. Every, every time, yeah. Every time I turn around, he gets me. Oh, he's been good. He's been good. Yes, he has. Shown up good. He's been good. He's been good. Yes, he has. Oh, every time. time. Oh, he's been so good. He's been good. I know we have. Shown up good. He's been good. He's been Shown good. Shown up. Yeah. Shown up good. Yeah. He's been good. Yes, he has. Shown up good. He's been good. He's been good. Shown up good. Shown up good. He's been good. He's been Shown good. Shown up good. He's been good. He's been Shown good. Shown up good. Of good. Up He's been good. He's been to good to me. me. Yeah. Show up. Show up. Show up good to me. Show up. Show up. Yeah. Show up good to me. Show up. Show up. I know we had. Show up. Good to me. Show up. He's been good to me. Show up. He's been very good to me. Show up, show up, yeah, yeah. Show up, good to me. Show up, show up, yeah. Show up, good to me. Oh, good, yeah. Show up, good to me. good. I know we have. You've been good to me. I know we been very good. Been good to me. Been good to me. You've been good to me. Have you been good to you? Have you been good to you? You've been good to me. Woke me up early this morning. Started me on my way. Give me a place to live. Give me food to eat. You've been good to me. Been good to me. You've been good to me. He is good. I know we have. Can I get one witness? Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. God been good to me. Yes. I can tell the world. I'm not ashamed, y'all. Let the world know. All he's done for me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. Have you been good to you? Can you tell the world? You've been good to me. Woke me up this morning. Got me on my way. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. Sure. Sure Show up, good to me. Show up, 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 show up, good to me. Show up,
Time for our scripture coming from book of Psalms, Psalms 100. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth to all generations. Psalms 100. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, God, Heavenly Father. we want to say our Father, Amen. which art in heaven, Jesus. hallowed be your name. Yeah, yeah. Your kingdom come. Jesus. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Hello. Lord, give us this day yeah. our daily bread. And forgive us, Lord, our debts as we forgive our debtors. Yes. Lord, don't lead us into temptation. Oh, Jesus. God. Please deliver us from the evil oh, ones. For it's your kingdom, it's your power, yeah. and all the glory yeah. belongs to you. Yeah, forever yeah. Forever yeah. and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Lord, we thank you so yeah. much, God, thank you, for God. this day thank you. that you have given us, God. Thank we woke up this morning, God, with health and strength, Jesus. with eyes to see, voice to talk, nose to hear. Nose to smell, God. We were able to get up and say our prayer, wash our face, brush our oh teeth. God, and God oh we were God. able to move around and dress ourselves, comb our hair. Yes. God, we were able here to drive to this location, God. Yeah. Jesus. There are some at home who were able to get up and walk around, move around, clean themselves up, and get up and praise your name this morning, God. We want to say thank you, God. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Lord, we're not going to take it for granted, God. You, you didn't have to wake us up this morning, God. You didn't have to clothe us in our right oh mind. God. We could have woke up unhealthy this morning, God. Yes, we could have woke up not in our right mind, but God. Yes, but, but Lord, God. we want to thank you, God, for what you did thank for you, us this thank morning, you, God. Thank you. And Lord, there are some who may be sick this morning that woke up, God. Lord, I pray that you be with them right now, God. Yeah. That you may grant them strength throughout this day, God. And come to the realization of who you are, God, and who you're going to be in their life and who you can be in their lives, God. Oh, God. Lord, we come this morning to praise your holy name, God, yes, yes, because yes. you're such an awesome and wonderful, awesome. great God. Awesome. Lord, there's no one like you, God. Lord, there's no one we can put before you, God. If we try, God, if we do, in any way, God, forgive us, God. And then, Lord, you know you're faithful yes, and just, yes, and you will yes, forgive yes, us, God. Yes. And you will still be the same God that you were when we, before we yes, sinned, God. Yes, yes. So, Lord, we thank you so much for that, God. The Lord, as we get ready to praise your name collectively, collectively as a group, God, over the waves, God, my God, over, the, my God. over Facebook, God, over the conference call, God, God, some may be in Houston, God, some may be in Louisiana, oh, no. God, some oh, no. in South Carolina, Virginia, oh, Illinois, God, some may be in Virginia, God, Lord, let your word go forth, God, please, God let your please, praises God. go up, God. We're going to praise your name together, God. We make it I can't touch one another, God. Ooh, but, Lord, God. your spirit is everywhere, God. The, the scriptures say, where should I go from your spirit, God? Yes, Wherever we go, you are there, God. So yeah, whether yeah. you are here in this building, God, yes, you are here on Wayside, God. You are here Ooh, no. on, in, you. in the thank North you. Side, God. Thank you are here you. in uh, Virginia. You are here in the West Side of the, the country, God. You are here thank in you, all God. other, other countries of the you, world, God. God. Yes. We want to say, God, be who you are, yes, God. Lord. Yes, and Lord, Lord. Head, let us be yes, subjected yes, to you, God. Oh, God. And know that you are in control of everything, God. Yeah. Then, Lord, we come praying for those who are sick and afflicted right now. Get Please, God. Family, God. Please, God. Those who are laying in bed right now, maybe can't get up but are looking, God. 
God, we come praying for them right now, God. Yes, yes. Lord, help them to praise your holy name where they are, God. Please, God. Even if they can't get up, Lord, help them to realize that you are there for them, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. And, Lord, because of that, even though they're laying down, you allow them to lay down, God. Yeah. Then, Lord, we come praying for all the doctors, the, 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 the nursing industry, God. We come praying for the hospital industry, God. We come oh, praying God. for the government, God. We come praying for the, the president, Hep the Lord governor, Lord. Lord. the Lord. mayor, the the, 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 the the, the county judge, God. Yeah. We come praying for every law enforcement that is out there, God. Yeah. Lord, we see what went on last week, God, through the shooting, through the police shootings, God. God, it looked like our world, um, people are not changing, God. Oh, God. Help, Lord Jesus. Help, Lord Jesus. Help, Lord Jesus. But, but God. Help, Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Mercy. But God, even through that, God, oh, God, you allow us to see, God, yeah. you are still working, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, Lord, for those who don't repent, God, we pray that they repent Please right Jesus. now in the name of Please Jesus, God. God. Please, God. Touch for those Lord. who don't Touch know Lord. you, God, we pray that they come to Touch know you Lord. right Lord. now, God. In the name yeah, of yeah. Jesus. Touch in the Lord name of Jesus. Jesus, God. But, Lord, we know, we know you're in control. We know you do what you chose to do, God. Oh, God. Yes, God. So, Lord, help us to help us. just do your will, God. Yes, Lord. We don't know what your will is, God. But if we read your word and follow what you said in your word, God, yes, Lord. that's your will for us, God. Then, Lord, again, as we get ready to worship your name, God, we pray that we worship you in spirit God, and truth, God. God. That's the word that's going to be spoken on today, God. That someone may be saved, God. That someone will know you as Savior Lord, God. Oh, God. They become one of us, God. A brother and sister of ours, God. Yeah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Thank we give you all God. the glory thank that you rightfully yeah, deserve, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us praise Amen. God, saints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is worthy of all the praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's our Jehovah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. And yeah. we're going to bless his holy name this morning. Thank None you. can compare to him. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jehovah, you're an awesome God, a healer, you're an awesome God, a deliverer, you're an awesome God, none can compare. Jehovah, you're an awesome God, a healer, you're an awesome God, a deliverer, you're an awesome God, none can compare, you're an awesome God. Oh, Messiah, Messiah, you're an awesome God, you're so faithful, you're an awesome God, provider, you're an awesome God, nothing compares, nothing compares to you, nothing can compare to you, Jesus. You're an awesome God Messiah You're an awesome God You're so faithful You're an awesome God Nothing can compare. A healer, deliverer, yeah, you're awesome. A healer, deliverer, yeah, you're awesome. Provider, my way, yes, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. Yeah, you're. Nothing can compare to you. Nobody can love me like you. 
nothing can compare to you. Nobody, nobody, nobody. No one can stop you. Nothing can compare. Nothing can compare. You're a healer, deliverer. Yeah, you're awesome. To heal, deliverer. Yeah, you're awesome. A healer, deliverer. Yeah, you're awesome. A healer, deliverer. Yeah, you're awesome. Nothing can compare to you. Nobody can love me like you. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Nothing can compare to you. Nothing can compare to you. Nobody, nobody, nobody. No one, nobody, nobody. Nothing can compare to you, Jesus. You're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. He's awesome. That's why, because every yeah, move yeah, I make yeah. is because of him. That's that's why we move because of him. Yeah, yeah. The song. Let's uh, ask our children to come up to the screen. Yeah. It's a song y'all usually do uh, in your children's church. So we're gonna try to. Uh, we're gonna try. So y'all just help us our children, okay? <laughs> Every move I make, every move I make, I'm making you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I'm taking you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look. I see your face, your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can I? Every breath I breathe, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy. Waves of mercy. Waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh, my. God is love. How can it be? Na 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 Oh my God, this love, how can it be? Na 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 Allowing the Lord to allow the 
abuse you in such a manner. We said that this group didn't get a chance to rehearse on last week. Uh, when they were scheduled to come, that's when the storms came through. And so they weren't able to be here as others had. But I want to thank God so much again. Brussels, Luciana, uh, Judy, Ed, thank y'all so much. Warren, Ken, thank you all so much for your contribution to worship on today. Our God is good, and he's worthy of all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, 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 not one. None else can he. All our souls' diseases. No, not, 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 not one. No, 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 no. Not one, one. In Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to care. God in prayer at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart roll away It was there by faith I received. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I got my side. And now I am happy. All the day I need. Oh, I, I need thee yeah, yeah, Every hour I, I need thee You've been better to us than we honestly deserve. You brought us from danger seen and unseen. And even when we were not aware of what was going on around us, you kept us, Lord. We heard that that was an invisible enemy still moving all around our world. But God, you kept us. And for all of that, we say thank you. 
Lord, as we bow before you, we remember the Mitchell family today. Reverend Donald Mitchell, who was here on Friday, no longer here this past Friday, but God's God, you have proven again to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we lift the family of Reverend Donald Mitchell to you, God, and asking again your grace and your mercy would be demonstrated in their lives even now. God, so many are sick and so many afflicted, but God, we know again that you are the great healer. We know that you are the awesome physician. We know that all power, all knowledge, everywhere we go, you're already there. And so God, we entrust every family into your hands. And we ask always that your perfect will be done. Once again, Lord, here it is. We are here for another day of celebration. Another day of recognition that you are God and that you're God all by yourself. Another day to give you honor, to give you glory, and to give you praise. And, and even in the midst of a pandemic, God, we're going to give you praise. Even, even though we'll not be able to assemble like we would desire to assemble in our hearts, we are assemble together to say thank you for being the great, good, and awesome God that you are, for loving us in light of ourselves and sometimes even in spite of ourselves, we thank you for it all. Now, God, we ask as always that you would speak to us and speak through us. You know what we need to hear. You know how to say what needs to be said. You know how to do what needs to be done. Help us, Father to give you the glory, the praise, and the honor that is only yours and yours alone. And then, God, we pray that as a result, we will grow out of giving you the glory that is yours. We pray it all in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. 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 Proverbs chapter 16. It is our reading from yesterday. I want to share just a few verses of Proverbs chapter 16, beginning at verse number one. We're going to read up to verse number four of Proverbs chapter 16. There's a simple subject. The Lord is in control. That's the simple subject. The Lord is in control. Proverbs chapter 16, beginning at verse one, it says the preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. The Lord has made all for himself, yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Simple subject, the Lord is in control. <laughs> yeah, the Lord is in control. Throughout these, uh, these weeks, these several weeks of uh, this pandemic that has been going on, the issues that we have been dealing with as it relates to COVID-19, the coronavirus, been asked the question a few times, you know, Lee, what do you think is going on? What do you think is happening? Pastor, uh, what do you think God is teaching us? What is it that God wants us to learn? What is it that God wants us to know? And I have, I have be honest with you, I have been proud to say I don't know. I have no idea what God is doing. I have no idea why he's allowing to happen what is happening. I have no idea what he's doing in the world, the seven continents of the world, and Arctica and Africa and Asia and Australia, North America, South America, and Europe. I have no idea why God is allowing what he's allowing to happen. Someone may ask the question, they say, how long, how long do you think we're going to have to go through this? I told them, I, I don't know. I really, I really, I really don't know. I have no idea how long we're going to have to experience this. We're hearing the data. We hear the news. We're hearing things that will take us into the fall. We're hearing maybe a recurrence in the winter time. All of those things take place. We're hearing all of the, the news. Uh, and some way, somehow, it has a way of affecting some adversely. It has some way of accept uh, some who are affected and accept the reality of where we are. I have no idea what the answers are, but the one thing I do know that the Lord knows, 
the one thing I do know, God knows. And, and that's enough for me to know that our Heavenly Father knows what's going on, to know that our Heavenly Father has a way of taking care of every situation, every problem. I have, I have the assurance that regardless to what the circumstances may be, I am convinced that our Father, our Lord, is in control. God, God allows this man Solomon to be the wisest man that lived. He was the wealthiest man that lived. He was the most well-known man that lived during his time. He was the son of the greatest king that Israel ever had by the name of David. And subsequent to his rule, the Bible teaches us that there was a divided kingdom. But the reality is that God had given him wisdom and he had given him insight into how humanity, especially those who were followers of Yahweh, followers of the Lord, those who were of the covenant-keeping community, he had given them guidance on how they were to live in their time, if they were to live skillfully, if they were to live life uh, wisely, if they were to live life from a godly perspective, and he gives them that word in what he calls the Proverbs. Very, very short, pithy statements, very unique statements wrapped up in a manner that literally gives a complete story. It tells the story of a life. It gives the narrative of a life, and it is a way of expressing the reality that the only way that we're to live in a way that truly makes sense is to live that life according to what God has already established. Solomon writes from the perspective of the Deuteronomic law or the Mosaic law, as we would call it. He had the responsibility again as a king, according to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17, of having the law before him so that he would know how God wanted the people to live. And then he could give the people proper judgments as it relates to the fact that he was a king. And so, therefore, he writes these proverbs. And when we get to chapter 16, and I pray that most of us of the Good Shepherd Church are following our reading guideline that we're reading through the book of Proverbs. Today would be chapter 17, but just a skip back to yesterday, looking at chapter 16, we have where God is demonstrating in no uncertain terms that he is in control and that everything around us, everything we know, everything about life that exists as we know it is under God's control. We refer to that as the sovereignty of God. And when we talk about the sovereignty of God, that means that God controls everything. He does not answer to anyone. He does not seek counsel from anyone. He does not ask permission from anyone. He doesn't say, is it okay if you don't mind? No, no, no. He does what he does because when you think about who he is, not only with his sovereignty, it is also with his love. It is with his mercy. It is with his power. It is with his presence. It is with his omniscience, his, his knowledge. It is with his wisdom that he does everything that he does and so he brings everything that he is to everything that he does and regardless to whatever the circumstance may be it is under his control somebody needs to know that today somebody needs to know that today that everything that we know is under God's control you ought to you ought to give him a hand praise today just to know that everything it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter who it is it doesn't matter what it looked like. It doesn't matter if you can't even see it. Everything is under his control. He would remind us of that in chapter 16 at verse 1. The word says, and the preparation of the heart belongs to man. But again, he's given us these contrasts of, again, how to live in a way, again, that shows dependence on God. Or it could show independence of God. But at the end of the day, showing that no matter whether it's independent or dependent on God, God is still in control. The preparations or the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. We will say it this way. Plans are under the control of his word. Plans are under the control of his word. Plans are under the control of his word. Meaning this, it is a matter again, it is a matter of experience uh, when we think about plans that we make in life. 
we go through those plans. He would talk about looking at Solomon in terms of even Solomon having the opportunity to build God the temple. They were built with plans in mind. But at the end of the day, all of the plans, all of the deliberations, all of the thinking, all of the arrangements, all of the consideration, all of the things that were set up when plans are going in accordance with, watch this, the wisdom of God, because Solomon would remind us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning, what, of wisdom. And we're talking about now knowing how to live life skillfully. He would remind us that when we make plans, God ought to be included. Can I, can I get somebody to help me? When we make plans, God ought to be included. How many times have we, do we find ourselves making plans, coming up with all kinds of ideas, all kinds of things, and we haven't consulted him at all? Many times we make those plans and then we ask him to give us a rubber stamp of approval. After we've done everything that we thought about doing, then we say, Lord, would you bless what I'm doing? But God is saying that when we make plans, he ought to be inclusive in those plans. Those plans that we make ought to come with prayer. Those plans that we make ought to come with the study of his word. Those plans that we make in life ought to come with the fact that we're seeking advice from other, other godly people. Those plans are inclusive of the will of God. And at the end of the day, whenever a plan is successful, we can't take credit for our own ideas on how we think it should have gone. We can only give God the credit because... Because ultimately, the plans that we came up with were in line with his word. So at the end of the day, the plans that we come up with in our own heart are already done by the word of God. So think about that the next time you're making some plans. Think about that the next time that you decide what you're going to do with that stimulus check. Think about that the next time that you decide what you're going to do with that income tax check. Think about that what the next time what you're going to do when it's time to go back to work. Think about what you're going to do. How are those plans are going to include the word of God because at the end of the day, God gets his way. God gets his way. Is there anybody that can relate to the fact that you made some plans and he, there's some kind of way those plans just all, I mean, just got all jacked up. I mean, it, nothing went like you thought it should have gone because in the reality of the, of the day is the fact that God's word still has to stand. None of us can conclusively do anything outside of God's word and God stands to the sideline and say, hey, that's okay. That's all right. Go and do what you're doing. God got a way of reminding us. I know I got some witnesses in here, some Christians that, that have known you made some plans in your past and right now when you still look back on them, you say, Lord, I should have done that. But, but the reality is that right now, even in the midst of those plans that we make, God ultimately has his way. So what God is saying to us, that the preparations of our heart, the plans of our heart, it belong to us. But at the end of the day, the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. <laughs> It's from the Lord. And so I just want to encourage any, any of us sometimes that we, are got, we got some folk who know how to plan some things. I mean, just know how to put it all together. And here's what you got to learn in life. You cannot get frustrated when your plans don't go accordingly like you thought they should have gone. Why? Because you got a God who is sitting high and God who is aware of the details of your life because he is able to see some things that you cannot see. So don't get frustrated. I know too many folk just get so frustrated frustrated because in my mind I dotted all the I's I crossed all the T's and this ought to go like that God is the no I said I was going to stay calm God is under control God is under control stop being frustrated when things don't go exactly like you planned for them to go Stop being frustrated when things don't go exactly the way you thought it should have gone. God, God, 
God, God, God has, the Lord has the answer. The Lord has the final, the final words. I don't know about you all. None of my life really going the way I planned it. But, I, but I'm cool with that. Why? Because I understand that my life is under the control of God. Because here's one of the things that I learned about him. He causes all things to work together. Can I get a witness in here? He causes all things to work together for our good, for those of us that love him and those of us who are called according to his purpose. Paul would remind us, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, it says, not that we have, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything, watch this, as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Yeah, if you planned a good trip, it's because God gave the answer to it. If you plan for a great marriage, it's because God's word blessed it. If you got a, a, a decent home, it's because God is the one who's given direction to it. And any time that our plans will line up with his word, we can call that a successful plan. Even when God chooses to frustrate our plans in order to get us where we need to be. Here's the second thing he would say in the second verse. All the ways of man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. But all the ways of man. Is there any, anybody in here ever do anything that you actually think you wrong? You know, you got some thoughts in your head and your mind, and you get to thinking about that thing. And as far as you're concerned, I'm right. It's, this is where I see it, and I just don't believe that it ought to be any other kind of way because my way is really the best way. As a matter of fact, anybody disagree with my way, you need to hit the highway. But the Lord is saying all the ways of man are pure in his own eyes. In other words, there are times, brothers and sisters, what God is saying, that we can actually have good thoughts in mind to do good things. But notice what God is saying. But the Lord weighs the spirits. In other words, what he is saying to us is that motives are under the control of his evaluation. Watch this. Just as plans are under the control of his word, motives are under the control of his evaluation. Or if you want to use his measurement. Because sometimes, if I'm not careful, I can do the right thing for wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, have you ever done anything for anybody and when didn't they, when they didn't say thank you, you got mad? You ever been there? Well, the question is, why did you do what you did? Did you do it for that person's betterment or did you do it because you wanted credit for it? So what God is saying, the ways, the ways, the ways of a man are pure. What? In his own eyes. Oh, here, listen, 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 listen. It's, it's one thing to tell somebody you love them with your mouth. But it's another thing for God to evaluate what you say in your heart. Yeah, because what he's showing here is that for all of us, for every human being, we can even sometimes deceive our own selves to think that we're better than we truly are. But God is saying, God is saying, God is saying, be careful, be careful, be careful when folk brag on you. Be, be, be careful when people are giving you applause and, 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 and praising you for who you are. The, the reality is it does not matter what folks say about us. What really matters is what God knows about us. Have you, again, have you, have you ever done anything? Have you ever done anything for anybody that you wanted others to talk about it? Can I get a witness in here? Have you ever done anything for anybody that you wanted somebody to put it on Facebook or or Instagram, or, or to talk about it on Zoom, or, or mention it in a conference call. Have you ever done anything for anybody that you wanted the credit for what you did, but then when, 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 when you got a chance to, you know, to respond to that, it, 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 some cases it may have been honest, but sometimes, you know, you say, well, you know, you, you just you know, praise the Lord. But in the mind, you're thinking, yeah, I sure did do that, didn't I? God is saying, be careful about, God is saying, be careful about having your ways to be pure in your own eyes, but to understand what's most important is how he evaluates what we do in our hearts. 
And what we always want to be sure of is that what we do and what we say are the same thing. And God knows that our hearts have no malicious in thought, thought has no malicious in intent. All we're thinking about is doing what pleases him. Why? Because Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says this, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and of the marrow and watch this and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our hearts I just wonder brothers and sisters can we be like David David said we should ask we should ask as David did in Psalm 139 he says search me O God and know my heart try me and know my anxiety or my anxious thoughts because what matters most is what God knows about how we're thinking. Because it's possible, brothers and sisters, for me to smile in your face. And all the time, I really want to take your place. I ain't really nothing but a... Some of y'all remember that. Y'all remember that. So the reality that God is saying to us that our motives must be under the control of his evaluation. If I'm doing it for any other reason other than to please God, it's for the wrong reason. Here's the third thing that thing he reminds us in verse 3. He says, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Commit, commit, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Works, watch this, works are under the control of his power. Plans are under the control of his word. Motives are under the control of his evaluation. But works are under the control of his power. That's a, that's a cool word. That word commit in the, uh, in the Hebrew language. In the Hebrew language, the word is gelal. And the word literally means to roll. It means to roll. It mean, literally means to roll. And the idea here is that one would roll normally in, 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 in its most physical, literal sense, in its physical sense, it would be the same word that you remember when, when, uh, when Jacob goes to find his wife, Rachel, and the Bible says that she, she sees her uh, feeding the sheep, and they had to roll a Lord stone from off a well, and then they had to roll that Lord stone back on top of the well, so it had to be moved. So what God is saying to us is that we are to roll the cares of our life. We're to roll the burdens of our life. We're to roll the anxiety of our life. Peter would remind us, cast all of our cares on him. Why? Because he cares for us. Again, the works are under the control of his power. Notice what he says. Commit your works to the Lord. Roll it over. To the Lord, listen, folk. Listen, folk. There, there, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a silent thing that's going on right now in our community that we are literally being stressed, and we don't even recognize it. Oh yeah, we're being stressed, and we don't recognize it because one of the things that God made us, God made us to be in community. God made us to be touching, feeling. God made us. Uh, to be around people. And so now this pandemic that is causing us to what to trust in the Lord even more is something that is taking us away from something that we are naturally used to doing. There are people who, who live alone, have really been alone. And now there's anxiety and there's stress that begins to, uh, to creep up. Whenever you put that mask on and you go out in society, yeah, it happened again Friday. Y'all remember I told y'all about that. You go out in and we're supposed to do the social distancing thing. Happened Friday. I went to Home Depot and it was just a fella. He just kept creeping up on me. He just kept creeping up on me. Just kept creeping up on me. And finally, I moved enough. I say, ho, ho, home, 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 home. That's Oh, he said, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. We, <laughs> there's a stress. But I, but I want to encourage us, no matter what the situation is, God say, roll it over on him. No matter what the circumstance may be, commit your work unto the Lord. And so watch now. Notice what he's saying. 
when we commit it to the Lord, what we're saying is that it is it, our intention. It is We recognize that what we are carrying is too heavy. What we're carrying, the load is just too cumbersome. So what we've got to learn to do is to take every difficulty, every perplexed circumstance and we've got to understand that we got a God who cares about us. He cares so much about you that he knows the number of hairs that are on your head. God cares. Roll it over on him. Roll it. Roll it. Let, don't, don't keep that thing to yourself. Roll it over. Say Lord you can handle it so much better than I can. God is saying to us even in the midst of this pandemic even in the midst of the coronavirus, even in the midst of COVID-19, we have to trust him. There are some folk that are not even uh, uh, experiencing some of the things that we're talking about now, as it, but there's, there are families that, that, that people are dying all around us. But God is saying, roll it over on me. There, there are it, sick, sickness and illness that people are still dealing with. God say, roll it over on me. That financial crisis that others are facing. And God is saying, roll it over on me. There are relationships that are being ruptured. God says, roll it over. Roll it over on me. Commit your work. Commit what you're doing to the Lord. And then, Lord, what the Bible is saying that he'll, he'll establish you. He'll, he'll make you steady. He'll make you steadfast. He'll make you feel like you're standing on the solid rock of his foundation which is Jesus Christ and the reality is that you don't have to worry about the other things that may come. Why? Because God has said I already got it. I already got you. Roll it over on me. I can handle it so much better than you can. Here's the final thing and we're done. In verse 4 he says the Lord has made all for himself, even, yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. All people are under the control of his plan. All people. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Genesis 1 reminds us in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything, everything, everybody is under the Lord's control. You need to know that today. You need to know that today because sometimes I'm here in the marketplace, I'm hearing folk, I'm hearing folk, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't doubt the data. I don't doubt, I don't doubt the data. I don't doubt what they're saying about uh, what's happening in the African American community as it relates uh, to the virus. But sometimes I'm hearing folk make it sound like, this virus was made for just for African Americans to, to get rid of us. You, listen, if that's how you're thinking, make sure you include God in that thinking. Be, because at the end of the day, when you do that, you're giving man more credit than man deserves. That some kind of way man got enough control to, to annihilate, kill, and get rid of people just at his own whim. I got news for us. Our God is in heaven and he is still doing as he pleased. I know what the dad is saying and I, it's sad to hear it, but the reality is I'm not going to give no man that kind of credit. I'm not going to give no man that kind of bragging right. I'm not going to give it to, I recognize that God is in control of it all. Oh, yeah, I got to be convinced in my mind that when my granddaughter goes to school, God is in control. I got to be convinced in my mind that when my pregnant daughter-in-law goes to work, God is in control. I got to be convinced in my mind that when my son is rolling around this city, God is in control. I got to believe that when I'm not at my house, my wife is still all right. Why? Because God is in control. Somebody recognize, better recognize what, 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 what Job said. What God said with Job. You remember the first two chapters. God the one brought it up. Have you thought about Job? Satan said, yeah, I want that booger. I want to get him. I want to bust his head. But you done built a hedge around him. And I can't get to him. God said, I tell you what, I'm going to move that hedge. And God gave him limitations. He gave him parameters. You can touch his stuff. But don't touch his body came a second time. The only reason that Job served you is because of the stuff that you give him. I, I know better than that about Job. So, so I tell you what, you can touch his body, but don't touch his soul. 
Why? Because God is showing everything is under, is under his control. Man, I tell you, this week, I heard some of the, I just heard some abysmal bragging about when we were going to have a vaccine for this virus. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put a team of folk together, and we're going to work all around this world. We're going we to come up with a vaccine for this virus. We, we're going to do it in a hurry. We're going to do it fast. We, we believe that by the end of the year, we'll have it. Can I, can I suggest to you? No, no, no. I don't want to suggest to you. I want to tell you. Our God. God don't give the wisdom. If God don't give the knowledge, if God don't give the strength, if God don't give the ability, this vaccine may never come. But even if it never come, we got to know our God. He's in control. Yeah, yeah. Donald Joseph Trump got to know God is in control. Greg Abbott got to know God is in control. Miss God, Miss Adani got to know God is in control. Mayor Turner got to know God is in. He's in control. He gives, he gives man limited power. He gives man limited ability. But God is saying, notice again the word. The Lord has made all, watch this, for himself. Come on, come on, help me. He's made it all for himself. He's made it all for himself. If he don't give it, ain't no man can come up with it. If he don't cause us to think about it, we can never have the thoughts of it. If he does not give us the ability, it will never ever come to fruition. But God is in. He's in control. I know, I know I'm hearing crime is going up, murder is going up in our city. People are afraid and... People are anxious, and I think we ought to be genuinely concerned. But you got to understand, Aiden, there's no man on planet Earth. There's no woman on planet Earth that's getting away with anything. Can I get a witness in here? There is no human being on the face of this planet. It doesn't matter on that title, prime minister, president whatever it may be there's no human being on the face of the planet that's getting away with anything God says even the wicked I'm done for the day of doom God God is demonstrated that I'm letting man try everything he know I'm gonna let him come up with every plan he got I'm going to let sin do its fullest and do its worst. I'm going to let sin just appear to have being rampant on our world. But there will come a day. Oh, yeah, y'all, that will come a day. And, and I, I'm, I, I, I just believe right now I'm living in that day. We ought to be living in that time because that's where our faith ultimately takes us. We see evil around us. We see murder. We see killing. We see robbing. We see raping. We know there's human traffic, all of that that's going on. But our God is ultimately going to have the last word. And one of these days, one of these days, when the smoke is cleared, one of these days when man has done everything he know how to do, tried everything conceivable in his mind because the intent of the heart is evil continually. When humanity has done everything it can think to do, we're going to look up one day and the only one going to be standing is our Lord. And I, I hear what Philippians say, every knee going to bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. I got to ask you before I'm done, is he Lord today? Is he Lord in your life? Is he Lord over your job? Is he Lord over your politics? Is he Lord over your home? Is he Lord? Because in spite of what's going on in our world today, I just need to share with us one more time. The Lord. Y'all know him, don't you? The Lord. 
Lord. Mary's little baby. The Lord. Yeah, Joseph said, the son. The Lord. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. The Lord who gave his life on the cross of Calvary. The one who declared, I'm not, I'm not letting nobody take my life. I'm laying it down. And I'm going to raise it up when I'm ready. The Lord who got up Sunday morning with all power and with all authority. The Lord is still in control. Every, everything about us is under his control. Father, how we love you. How we thank you. How we bless you. For knowing that no matter what the circumstance may be, it is under your control. And Father, I pray that you would give us, the people of God, a spirit of unity, a spirit of hope, a spirit of faith, a spirit of belief that you are under, everything is under your control all the time. All the time. The midnight, you're under control. The, the, the mornings, you, you, everything is under your control. The, the noonday, everything is under your control. When we got stuff, it's under your control. When we don't have it, it's under your control. When we have good days, it's under your control. When we have bad days, it's under your control. When babies are born, it's under your control. When babies die, it's under your control. And that's never a moment, that's never a minute, that's never a second. When everything, everything we know, every person we know, is under your control. Help us to live that way. Help us to trust you that way. And God, we can trust you because you said it in your word. It's all under your control. Even through our tears, help us to know you're under control. Ooh, even sometimes when we're hurting, help us to know you is under your control. Arthritis, heartache, diabetes, it's all under your control. And help us to know that, Father. Help us to live that so that we can live life skillfully. Help, help us to live it so we can live life with your wisdom, the best means possible, that it just couldn't be done any other way than what you did it. Help us to know at every moment, at every minute, in every circumstance, in every situation, it is all under your control. Oh, thank you for that reality. God, for somebody that may be listening today who has not trusted in Jesus as their Savior, help them to know that their life is under your control. It doesn't matter how what they've done in their past. It doesn't matter how bad they've been, how evil they've been. It doesn't matter how many things that they've done that they even sense that it can't be forgiven. For, Lord, I pray that you would help them to know their life has been under your control for all of the years of their existence. And right now, Lord, help them to know you are controlling their salvation. You are controlling their eternal destiny. And help them to know the only thing that they need to do is to believe in your son, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross, who was buried in a grave, but who you raised from the dead. That's some showing off control. You let him die, but you got him up. That's, that's just about all the control that we can ever, ever imagine. That's, that's beyond our ability to fully understand. But we believe, God, that someone today who was lost in sin, someone today who's been living life, doing their own thing, calling their own shots, doing whatever they felt like doing, whenever they felt like doing it, Someone who has caused harm to a whole lot of folk and even harm to themselves. Help them to know that their life is so under your control that you spared them for this day. You spared them for this moment. You spared them for this minute that you might show your control. 
and allow them to come out of darkness and into your marvelous light. How we thank you, how we bless you, how we honor you, and how we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you that still may be listening, uh, you may be with someone that is saved, someone who knows Christ. You can let them know today that you've trusted in Jesus as your personal savior, and that person can start a walk with you and a talk with you just to explain some things to you in the word of God uh, as it relates to your journey, this new journey that you may be taking with him. Uh, and again, it may be again that you don't know anyone. Maybe you're watching this by, by live stream by yourself, by long. Uh, we want to let you know the number to call is 713-672-9847, 713-672-9847. Uh, leave us a message if you will, and we're going to make sure that we get in touch with you as soon as possible uh, because we want you to know that we are trusting a God who's got everything under his control. And I say that again to every believer that's listening today. You need to know without any doubt that God, the Lord, he has it under control. <laughs> Come on, give him a hand, praise for his goodness, his greatness, and his kindness toward us. Our God has it all under his control. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. We know that the Bible says that God loves what? He loves a cheerful giver. And so we are thanking God again for the gifts that he chooses to bless us with knowing that he says if we give sparingly if we give little watch this by grace he gives us little in return but if we give much trusting him by grace he gives us much in return you know why because he's under he got your money under his control <laughs> he's got your finances under his control he's got the economy under his control. Amen, amen, amen. Father, how we love you again and thank you again for the giver and we thank you for the gift. And then we thank you most of all for this indescribable gift that is centered in circumference in the person of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we know that as a result of having Jesus, everything we give to you does not measure terms of what you give us in your son Jesus Christ God thank you again that we're able to exercise our faith we exercise our belief we're able to exercise our dependence and our reliability upon you as we give for the purpose of your kingdom as we give for the purpose of the spread of your gospel to the end that the glory is all yours the growth again is ours it's in Jesus name we pray and for his sake amen Amen, amen, amen. Thank you again for your prayers and for your positive responses, if you will, to the word of God. A few things we just need to make mention of. Uh, if y'all have a pen, pencil with you right now, I need you to write this down. Most of you have it. You've seen it on the program. But we're getting ready to transition to our Sunday school. Uh, we're just going to say today that Sunday school is going to start about 1020. It's going to start at 1020. I need the ladies in particular to write these numbers down for me. 605-313-5488. 605-313-5488. Access code is 889 605-313-5488. Access code 889-555. That's the number you're going to call at 1020 uh, as we transition from our worship to our Sunday school. To all of our brothers, our adult brothers, our men, especially, if you will, turn using the old number that we used to using, the one that you call on the conference call today. That's what we're going to be using for our Sunday school time on today. Don't forget tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is our, is our church prayer time, our, our corporate prayer time on the conference line. So I'm praying that everyone will be calling in on tomorrow night with the hope that again, we will get all come together to pray for one another. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday evening at seven o'clock, the women, you're going to call that number that I just gave you. You're going to call that number again at 7 p.m. 
on Tuesday night for your time of study. The men, Tuesday night, same time. You're going to call the old conference line for your time of study. Our, our Sister Love Ministry, Tuesday night at 7. Our MOC Ministry, Tuesday night at 7. And we got two different conference lines that we're calling from. The women have your the, number, the new number that you've been given. The men have the old number that we're going to maintain. Continue reading uh, through the book of Proverbs. Continue reading through the book of Proverbs. You're reading chapter 17 today. Continue reading to the end of this month. Thank you. Again, parents, please ensure that you're allowing your children and youth to view the online devotions on a weekly basis. Uh, our young adults have, been, have a Zoom conference every Wednesday night. Our teenagers have a Zoom conference every Sunday night. Parents, please help, help us to stay connected. Help your children to stay connected and engaged. Again, for the info, uh, text how to the church mobile text number uh, or send a message via email or Facebook. Just call one of the teachers, especially for our children. The, the, the children, teachers are going to have that information for you. You can always call Julia. You can call Stefan. Uh, I don't think it pay for y'all to call me because I don't know when they're doing this. All I know is that they're doing it, and I praise the Lord. That <laughs> so please uh, make those calls so that everybody can stay in, engaged. And I think we're doing well, but we got to just keep doing it and keep doing it well. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. One last thing. Let's do this. Power clap, if you would, for our birthdays. Uh, Alan Bailey, Colby Jones, Oscar Dunham, Linton Jason Sr., Yancine Robeson, Devin Denton. Happy birthday to each and every, all of you. God bless you. And one year anniversary. Oh my goodness. Kelvin and my Brianna Melanson. One year anniversary on the 19th of this month. God bless and may the Lord keep each and every one of you. Again, I continue to ask that you continue to pray for the, uh, the Mitchell family. Uh, Donald, Don, I say it this way. Donald is my, is my is my brother-in-law by way of my family from Beaumont. Uh, sister Dana, again, would be would be my oldest sister, to be honest. She's, she's my age, so, uh, uh, so her husband passed away, and we want to be praying for the family. Uh, and let me, let me say this, y'all. Cherish one another. Yeah, he, he uh, Donald was actually on his job working, from home Friday, uh, walked into the room and basically said to wife, to his wife, to Dana, uh, I'm feeling bad. And uh, as we say, life is like a vapor. Just as he was talking, he wasn't talking. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Let's be kind. Let's be loving. Let's do those things that God has called for us to do as it relates to our relationships with one another. Amen. Don't take it for granted that you're going to always be here because, again, remember, our life is under the control of the Lord. He says to us, there's a time to be born, but there's also a time to die. So let's keep that in mind. Don't forget Sunday school, 1020. It's about five minute, a five-minute break and start calling those conference lines. Uh, we want you, to, again, to be engaged in our Sunday school. Again, thank you so much, Ben, Ken, Warren. Thank you all so much, Brussela. Uh, Sienna, Judy, Ed, thank y'all so much for our producer and director, Zach and Jam. Thank y'all so much for what you all continue to do. We love y'all so much again for your contribution during this time of testing. Now, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to praise you again, to give you the honor, the glory that is yours and yours alone. We pray, God, that as we move forward, you continue to keep us in your perfect peace with our minds always stayed on you. Being careful that every juncture, all the glory, all the honor, all the praise is yours and yours alone. We thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will not be doing Bible study this Wednesday. Remember, Tuesday night is the time to do it. Men and women, 7 o'clock on our conference line. God bless you. Love y'all. Bye-bye.